enough of that though, I'm going to put it in sport mode. Hello everybody, what's happening, what's happening? My name's Neil, welcome along to Midlife Motors. And today you find me just on the outskirts of Glasgow up by the massive big wind farm, Whiteley Wind Farm, I think it is. Now the reason for this is we're going, we're going electric today. I've wanted to uh, come and have a go at this car. In fact, I've, I've driven it once before. I wanted to bring this car to the channel for a while now, but it was available about a year ago and lots of videos were coming out about the Ionic 5. And I thought, well, let's just leave it. Let everybody let the hype go. And then we'll revisit the car after 12 months and 12,000 miles and see what it's really like. I mean, I know the journalists uh, got all excited about it a year ago, but what is this really like after a year in use? First things first, let's have a quick look around. I think you're probably quite familiar with it. I'm a few things that I'd quite like to point out though. Handsome looking thing this. I like the, the driving lights that are on at the moment. Also the, uh, along the front here at nighttime, that's a light bar that lights up, which looks really Tron-esque, which is quite cool. These are the fins at the bottom, which open and close to keep the battery cool. And uh, obviously, few of these out on the road now so you'll be familiar with it just the, the size of it this is a this is a big car this is a top spec car so it's got the i think the nicer alloy some people prefer the other ones this car's all-wheel drive the equivalent of about 300 horsepower but it does weigh it does weigh 2.2 tons i think that's one of the downside of electric cars isn't it just the out and out weight but we'll just finish off around the back here because it is a handsome thing it's definitely got road presence this car no doubt about that Having a look around the inside now, I love a cream interior and this one looks absolutely superb. Fair play to Hyundai. I think the quality of this material is really, really, really nice. In the front here, two screens for the driver. One's got all your drive information, one runs your apps, etc., etc. No transmission tunnel in the uh, in in the front of the car because this is based on this is not based on a nice car, so you've got plenty of space. I mean, that is the theme here, masses of space and loads of bits and bobs. The seats, for example, heated and cooled in the front here, which is great. You've got two uh, charge points there for all your bits and pieces, a 12 volt charger down the bottom there. Just everything that you could possibly need to to go about your your daily business. You've also got uh, both sound systems, so that sounds really nice as well. Jumping around the back here, again, just more and more space. Heated seats in the back, more places to plug in. Perfect, isn't it? Oh, and one other, I'm not sure, hopefully the camera will pick this up, but right down here, you can even plug in a three pin plug. So bring your kettle, perfect stuff. Quick look in the boot. This one's got a motor in the back because it's all wheel drive, so it's quite a high boot level. This just be mindful of that. But uh, again, plenty of space. Electric tailgate. Got everything that you would get on a premium car. This this is this is filled to the gunnels. This one. Um, this is where you charge it. Clearly, we'll close that down and whizzing around the front because there's one other thing that I wanted to point out, which I think this is a neat bit of packaging by Hyundai. This is a good touch. You have got a bit of a frunk, and that's where you put your cable for charging the car. You lock it away, it stays dry, it doesn't rattle around and you never lose it. Good stuff. Well, what's it like to drive? Well, in, immediately I've got comfy in, in seconds. I've adjusted the seat and I can see out gray. Steering wheel, pedals, all in nice. Steering, steering wheel's a little bit upright, you know, like a, like a bus, which is a bit, it's taking a bit of getting used to, but it's, it, it's fine. Dials are all really clear. I like the way it's set up here. Battery's telling me we've got 60% left, 132 miles of range. The paddles here, you'll be used to them in probably your own car for changing gear. And here they do the regenerative braking. So they either turn it up or turn it down. I've turned it to zero because I just want to see how the car drives. I want to feel what the brakes are like. Looking straight ahead, I've got a heads up display as well, which is quite useful. So yeah, all in all, it's easy to jump in and just go. I'm not, it doesn't feel, into the size doesn't feel intimidating. I'm not struggling to keep it in its lane or anything like that. Yeah, it's good. What is the range? What's the range in the summer and what's the range in the winter and how long does it take to charge up? That sort of stuff. Yeah, the range of the car in the summer is around about 210, 220 miles. The range in the winter is considerably less. I reckon this car is probably going to get you when you're negative, you know, minus five temperatures, 
your range is going to be somewhere in the region of about 170, 180 miles. So it gets hit quite bad. Yeah, it gets hit badly. And also, if you, depending on what charger you're using and how cold the battery is, it can take longer to charge. Um, and this is all from a car that has a claimed range of 285 miles. Average uh, miles per kilowatt I've been getting over 11 or 12,000 miles of driving is exactly three miles per kilowatt. Which I think is quite good, yeah, isn't it's not it? too is bad. So the this... general rule of thumb, if you can get three, you're doing well. Yeah, doing three, four is excellent, I think. Um, four is excellent, three is okay. Uh, I reckon two thirds of my driving is on the motorway, so you get a little bit less on the motorway. And you're charging at home now, so you were saying that the, the public network it didn't really do it for you. So you just charging every night, is that more or less how you do it? Yeah, charging every night, just plug in um, with a few hours of cheap rate electricity. Yep. Just program, the car actually does the programming. You program oh, okay. when you want it to start and stop. And as soon as you park up, you just plug in and it, it charges during the, the off-peak electricity during the night. Um, and it's really economical from that point of view. Um, you're probably looking at around about, I think about three pounds a night gets you somewhere in the region of about 90, 90 miles range. That's so pretty good. Yeah, it's that's not, pretty good. not particularly expensive. We've looked at various bits of the car. What's your favorite bit about this? This is your first electric car, you're saying. What's your favorite bit about this car? What's the best, best thing about this car? Um, I think it's the low down torque. It's the, the grunt you get coming pulling out of a ju junction and yep. the ease with which you get it there's no lag there's no delay yep. and you can just floor the throttle from a sp any speed <laughs> and you just rock it away <laughs> this, you never tire of that well, the thing is, this isn't this isn't a particularly fast electric car this is an all-wheel drive yeah ultimate version uh, of the Hyundai's Ioniq 5 with the equivalent of sort of 300 horsepower yep. but it is a fairly heavy car but the torque just overrules the weight to be honest and uh, I think that's the that's the good the best thing about the car and then when you just cruise in it's got quite a soft setup it's not yeah, it's got a nice it's not, ride it's not a back route bruiser this one this is really just a, um, a car for wafting about in slip road onto a motorway I think that's this car's secret weapon and what is what is the main negative I mean most journalists go it's the weight it's the weight is it do you, I don't really feel the weight is it that's not yeah, really the, the main the negative. Torque, the torque mass mass the heavy weight yeah. um, uh, so you don't really feel the weight. I think if you started to throw the car around a bit, you would notice it, but uh, it's not really that kind of car. And the tires that the car comes with uh, are absolutely hopeless. Um, I think they're designed for um, minimum rolling resistance. They're, they're Michelin EV tires. Right. And, and if you start pushing them on, especially in the wet, I've had push on understeer and I've had on throttle oversteer. Um, you don't really know what you're going to get. So it's, not a, it's not a great mixture, to be honest. That's yeah, not the perfect it's, it's recipe. The, you know, the tyres wouldn't be my first choice um, on, on any car. I'm using the regenerative brake and we're coming to some lights. I've put it on level one, pull the pad, level two, pull it again, level three. And it's actually bringing the car to a more or less complete stop. There we go, and that's it stopped on the eye pedal. And then I press to accelerate, and away we go. I can take some of the level off. Three, two, one. That will allow the car to coast. I think this is the thing that us non-electric car drivers are gonna have to get used to in the future because that does chuck. I mean, we were down, we just gained five miles of range almost using that pedal for a couple of miles. So I think that is, everything else just seems kind of the same, but that's something you'd have to get used to. You're not changing gear, you're adding braking. Fair enough. This road here seems to have some twisty bits. So we're gonna see what this is like. We're not in an MX-5 near, we're not in an MX-5. We're gonna go from dead stop because that's fun in this car. We're gonna go cautious and see what happens. Right. Whoa! Onto the brakes. Get the weight over the nose. Try and turn it in. Bit of throttle. Rear drives it round. Handy that it's four-wheel drive, definitely. 
carrying a bit of speed through there that's nice that's nice i'm not i'm not harassing the car i'm trying to be gentle with it i'm trying to just you can feel i am feeling the weight oh yes not 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 too leany not too rolly but you do feel the weight keeping a always keep a little bit of throttle on it and then punch it out of the corners and it just picks up which is nice car's telling me to stay in my lane so there's a clue <laughs> around here yeah it's very much uh, brake early there we go get off the brake get on the throttle turn early yeah the brakes could be a little bit stronger the steer has not really got any feedback but the chassis, pretty compliant. Didn't get too flustered, liked it. That's Midlife Motors' first taste, I guess, of electric cars, and we've enjoyed it. This is a, I think we've started at a fairly high level, and this is not a particularly cheap car, but um, we've enjoyed driving it. We've kind of got used to it. Lots of tech in here, fair play to Hyundai. I think they've really raised the bar with this car. You have to give them full credit for taking, on the, taking the Germans head on and probably teaching them a thing or two would i could i i don't know i think an electric car will be in all of our lives uh, one day soon won't it so i think we've probably got to get our brains switched on and start thinking about them we've got a couple more to try in the not too distant future so keep your eyes peeled for that for those but for now if you've enjoyed this one if you can give us a thumbs up that would be great and if you could subscribe below it pops up somewhere that would be fantastic too thanks very much for watching See you again soon. I'm going to try that acceleration one more time. <laughs>